You know what I love about indie music? What do you like about our stuff? It grooves me. It soothes me. It takes me to another level. It makes me feel so good. Indie, indie music, music. Welcome to the indie music show. Welcome to the Indie Music Show with your hosts, Stephanie Janot and Johnny J. What's up, Johnny? It's officially summer. It is. It is. Uh, that was one kind of, well, of a warm last month of spring, though, I'd say, out here. I kind of just went from blistering cold to, to warm in just like three seconds, it feels like. I know, one minute I was complaining that it was the coldest spring ever, then I was complaining that I need an air conditioner. It's weird. <laughs> there is never, like, a warm, happy medium. I mean, of course, mostly everybody will tell you, like, your two favorite seasons will either be fall or spring, you know, but those, you know, they hardly last compared to, you know, you, you know, like, say, there's that horrible joke here in Chicago. It's like, oh, there's only two seasons. You know, you got construction, and then you got one. Either way, you know, uh, it's just, they're brutal. So, yeah, that's true. But I, I'm glad summer's here. I've been trying to spend uh, more time outside doing some more summer activities. Uh, some barbecuing outside. I've been taking a lot of my work outside with me, you know, writing songs, more of my acoustic instruments and stuff like that and, and stuff. And uh, at least what I can do. And then I've been going on some more walks, get some fresh air and things like that. How about yourself? Well, um, yesterday they had the um, Make Music Day in New York City for the first day of summer. They always have it where um, when it's running normally in front of every storefront and inside of parks and everywhere outside in New York City, there's live music all over town. But That's right. In, but instead, because of, you know, the quarantine and all of that, I mean, they, they did go back into phase two today, but yesterday they took it virtually. So they had artists like posting videos of them in rehearsal mode or f singing from their windows. And then they had this one portion of it where it was called My Song Is Your Song. And two artists would be paired up with each other and swap songs. So, like, I got a song of this, this girl named Layla Giovanni, and I, 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 I remade her song to sing it and post it for the, for the event. So it was kind of cool, you know, to, 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 to be able to, like, listen to somebody else's song, try to reimagine it and do it over, and then to hear a different approach to something that you would write. I really like that. So you kind of like to put your own painting, let's say, if you're taking the Mona Lisa and then just painting it into Stephanie World. Right. I can dig it. Nice. Very nice. But what I want to do is go into um, our featured artist mode right now. We have a featured artist but that goes by the name of Brittany Camille. What's up, Brittany? Hey, how are you guys? I'm wonderful. Thank you guys for having me. How are you? Good, I'm good. Well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, I was just kind of laughing because you guys were talking about, you know, the weather, but I live out here in California, so, you know, it's been pretty great all around. So. <laughs> well, California is like, um, is it is it like, well, 80 and above every day, or like, does it ever drop? Like... Well, I live in Sacramento, so it drops at night here, which is kind of nice because, like, you can have your air on during the day, and then if you turn it off, you know, at night you could open your windows, and it's usually pretty okay for the most part at night. But, yeah, it's pretty much... Like 70s, 80s year round. Yeah, it kind of goes down to 70s. Sometimes it gets cold here in Sacramento during the winter, like 50s, rarely 40s, but sometimes 40s. But, you oh, know, wow. that's really Don't nothing compared to... <laughs> but there's never a need to put on, like... There's never a need to put on, like, heat or anything, right? <laughs> Not too. I mean, you still got to put it on because, like I said, it gets breezy at night. So especially during the winter or the spring and stuff like that, it can get kind of cool at night. But I came from Illinois. So I was in Illinois 20 plus years. Um, so, you know, I, I try my best not to turn on the heat as much as possible. So. <laughs> I know you're paying. I know that. I have tears. So I'm like, go oh, throw on a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, is is it Illinois? Like you said, you're in California. Do they have the? Did they have the same kind of protocol with the quarantine there that they had? Yes, actually, um, California. We were one of the first states to go into quarantine. Like our governor was not playing any games, so we were actually the first ones put on quarantine. And we're just now coming out of it over the last like two or three weeks. Um, so luckily, we haven't gone back into phase two yet. Our numbers haven't jumped that much, but um, you know they they're 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 getting a little high. Some people are, are getting you know a little worried about it, but compared to our population, we're actually doing pretty good well you know i have to say like it's the summertime and like you know they did go into phase two where, where now they're opening up the restaurants you could sit down in a restaurant and they also open up the hair and nail salons but it's so hot and that mask you have to wear is like the hottest thing <laughs> in the world and actually they just mandated it yesterday so now we have to wear a mask in the whole state as of yesterday so that's new um i mean i was i was wearing them when i was out and about and stuff anyway but now it's like you absolutely have to have it on when you go into somewhere so that's definitely taking some adjusting and i'm definitely been buying more masks which is crazy but it's like now since we have to wear them so much you know i gotta make sure they match my outfits you know girl let me tell you i try to save money but i've been making my own masks <laughs> Like, cause it's easy. Uh-huh. It's easy to make your own mask. So, like, I've been making my own mask, and I haven't spent a, a penny on buying one. <laughs> so, like, oh, wow. I'm, not, nice. I'm not buying any, but just the fact that we have to wear it to be outside is kind of like, you know, a bit much. You know, was, but it is protective. Things kind of like, like finally over. Like, if people continue to wear like masks as a fashion accessory, perhaps. <laughs> Possibly. Or, but you like, know what? It's so. Like, Funny, even before this quarantine and the pandemic, I've been seeing people wearing masks a, a, a lot in New York City, even before it started, you know? So it's kind of weird, but... Yeah, yeah, they have the ones that you could tie your hair up with now, too. Like, it's a mask slash hair tie and stuff like that. So those are interesting. My cousin makes them, and of course I had her make me one that has, like, all these dangly pearls and all this, like, super extra, but I love it. <laughs> nice, <laughs> And then, of course, like, there's people that, like, kind of just do, like, uh, you know, with just bandanas, like, they're outlaws in the old quest, and they'll wear that with some dark sunglasses and a hat, just literally just walking into convenience stores. It's no big deal. I mean, it would have been right before that, like, oh, what's that guy's going to do to the store? You know, he's going to hold it up or something. But then you got the whole convenience store, more or less, full up with these guys, and it does not think there's anything of it, you know? Like, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's become the norm. <laughs> <laughs> definitely the norm but it was nice um you know i have protested a few times and and when we've been out marching almost everybody has been wearing masks so you know i, I think that that's real appreciative of everybody being considerate of each other and stuff like that I, i've rarely seen people without them so that's been awesome well that's oh, good that's so nice you, you, you you joined the um protest so like what was that like out in california Absolutely. I've gone to four protests now. Um, I've gone to four of them, and it has been peaceful, all the ones that I've been to. Um, one of the ones I went to during the day, the very first weekend where they said people started rioting and looting and stuff of that nature, um, that night it, it turned into that, but it wasn't like that during the day when I was there. Um, everything I've been to so far has been peaceful, and it's, and it's been so amazing. Sacramento is such a diverse place. Um, there's just so many people, and, and you know, the first time I marched, you know, we literally took up the entire downtown. Like it was like thousands and thousands of people. Um, and I just oh, was wow. so overwhelmed. Like I cried just looking around and seeing the, the number of people that was there. And, and, you know, everyone was, was chanting black lives matter. And, and I teared up and I cried just cause you know, a, it was sad that, that we had to, to chant that and feel that way. But B, just the number of people that were there in support and everybody was peaceful. And, 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 you know, it was just, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. It really was. It's nice to know that there's a lot of unification for this, these particular matters here in current events, too. And, you know, you see, like, a lot of people do want to make a difference. And, you know, like like you had mentioned, you know, um, the diversity of the, the population that came out there, I guess, during there, and the fact that, you know, hey, even better yet, it was a, it was a, uh, a constructive, peaceful, uh, you know, successful conclusion at the end yeah. of it. So yeah. that, that's very nice to know. It's very refreshing to, to know, like, hey, yeah, these things can work. The, you know, I mean, it's just, why do you think they work so well? And, like, say, a, a great community like Sacramento compared to, like, some other cities here in the United States? Well, I was told that the looting and stuff that happened the very first 
first weekend. It hasn't happened since. It was just the very first weekend people were, were protesting. There was some looting and stuff that very first weekend. Um, and I was told that it was not so peaceful, you know, later on in that night. Um, but, I, and you know, I, honestly, I just think that if, if you're coming together with the right cause and stuff like that, um, one of the most strong memes I saw was, you know, protesters are protesters, looters are looters, you know. So people are, are confusing the two as being one and the same. And it's just not, you know. We, we, totally. we can't forget the reason why we're there in the first place, you right. know. And, and a lot of people lose sight of that with, with the smaller things or the little incidents. And it's like, you know, there were thousands of people protesting versus maybe dozens that were looting. You know what I'm saying? So totally. it's like as long as you keep your, your eye on the prize, which is what we're fighting for and, and you know, what why we're all there, I think that in itself um, keeps people a little more protest or a little more peaceful. And, and the police weren't, um, they weren't violent with us or anything of that nature and, and you know there's been a few problems in Sacramento with the police force uh, specific incidents over the years and stuff like that so I don't know if you know they were told beforehand don't you dare <laughs> but you know we didn't have that kind of problem here during the day now as far as the first weekend when the looting and stuff took place at night I'm not sure um, right. what that turned into that night I wasn't there but um, from, from my understanding nobody was hurt um, they just people kind of broke into a few places and stuff like that so well, well that's a relief um, with like no casualties and stuff you know some other yeah. places, unfortunately that wasn't the cause have, like with the, as far as the state and local government there I mean in fact you are in Sacramento you know that's the capital right I mean yeah. like has there been anybody you know, state and local government and maybe even down to the police force that actually kind of contributed to the march and stuff like that you know what it hasn't and I honestly can say I'm a little disappointed in Sacramento for that like the place I've seen other places that you know um, officers have decided to take a knee or march with them and stuff and they have not done that here um, they kind of just stay in their place and a lot of uh, for some reason the goal here of some groups is to march onto the freeway so a lot of times the officers are, are just kind of barricading the freeways to try and keep us from going on there to stop traffic um, so that's just been the case here um, but no they haven't they haven't dealt with us or marched with us and it's actually kind of kind of disappointing especially for as diverse as it is here in Sacramento to still hear about I mean we still have the same problems as everywhere else and of course we are the capital but for as diverse as, I, as I've seen the city be uh, it's a little disappointing with the, with the you know incidents that occur with our police force sometimes so right right well, I uh, I only hope can hope that that improves from your community, and then hopefully maybe like a widespread situation throughout the U.S. and other yes. countries. So yeah, definitely. It's it's nice to see people taking taking action. You know, finally, it's been a long time coming. So it's a wonderful thing. And and you know, my son is um, paralyzed on his left side. Oh, so no. when he was yeah, when he was twelve, he had a stroke. Oh my God. And when he, I know. I'm sorry to hear so that. Hard. Yeah, he did. It's okay. It's okay. It was a rough time. I was um, actually, my mom had lung cancer and she was getting her lung removed for lung cancer in Chicago at the time. And I lived in Bloomington, which was two hours away. So I was with her in Chicago getting her lung removed for lung cancer. And his school called me and they found him passed out in the bathroom at his school. Oh my God. Um, so I know it was crazy. So I had to leave my mom at the hospital and, and go back to my son. Luckily, his dad worked right up the street. So he was there, you know, almost immediately within a few minutes. Um, but he ended up having a stroke. And when they took him to the hospital, he was, um, didn't have any activity to the right side of his brain for six oh. and a half hours. Oh. So as a result of that, he's paralyzed on his left side. Um, so because of that, his arm is kind of always retracted, kind of. It almost looks like he's always reaching for something in his coat or in his shirt or something like that. Okay. So this movement in particular has, has been really strong to me because I worry so much about him every day. He's six one, size 13 men's shoe, you know, He's a big boy. Thank I mean, God. he's skinny, but he's tall, you know. And my biggest fear is that he's approached one day by cops and they're and telling him to put his hands, hands up. Or and like his that. hands, it looks like it's reaching for something and it's not. So that is one of my biggest fears, which is why this movement has been, you know, so, so deep to me because I don't want him to ever be in that situation where he's not allowed the opportunity to, to explain why he can't put his hands up. I hear that. Wow. Now, that's, you that's you cool. being a mother of a black son, because it's just, like you 
you said, it's the, it's the black boys that are approached because of breathing while black, basically. Yeah. Talk about yeah, your song, yeah. Hands Up. Okay, so um, actually, again, my son was a reason for that song. Um, uh, I just, I, I had a hard time not dealing with it. I was glad that he made it. It was such a significant stroke that, you know, he they said that he shouldn't have made it, and he did. And the part of his brain that it affected was his personality. So the fact that he's still himself, they said, is literally a miracle because it was so significant that, you know, they said he, should, it, he shouldn't even have been himself, and he was. But, you know, it was hard for him to go from playing basketball and, you know, it happened at 12. Like, that's such a vital age for men. And I literally have had this conversation with him several times, which, you know, all, a lot of black mothers have those conversations with their son anyway, but I literally had to tell him, you have to scream at them. I'm paralyzed. I can't put my hands up. You know what I'm saying? And one day, awesome, you know? it, it, it is, it is, it really is. And one day I was literally just driving. I had dropped my son and my dad and my daughter off at the airport to come to California in St. Louis from Bloomington, which is about two and a half hours from Bloomington. And literally on my way home um, from that airport trip, I it literally got a revelation from God. Like, I don't know what else to call it. It's like the thoughts came in my head, the words came in my head, and I just started singing it. And I just started crying while I was singing it on my way home. Like, I was literally in the car by myself just singing this song. And, and I felt like God told me, this is this is what, you, you need to sing this song. You need to get this song out there. So I wrote it, and it took me <laughs> so many times. Like, I was writing it as much as I could while I was driving. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And of course, I couldn't do it. And so then I just worked on it over the next week. Um, and then after I worked on it, I cried so many times just trying to sing it. Like, I couldn't even get through the whole song um, without crying for a long time. So eventually, once I got, you know, a little more adjusted, practiced a little more, sang it a little more, got my emotions under control, um, I went and I recorded it in the studio. So it was three years ago that I recorded Hands Up. And I just now released it to YouTube. Actually, it was even prior to the George Foreman stuff. I released it to YouTube. And um, I, I'm singing it live. It's not the song, like the MP3 version. It's just me singing about it. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me and, and, and talk to me about it and just thank me, especially mothers. I've had a lot of mothers reach out to me and say, I have a black son. Thank you for doing this. So I guess my, my thought process in it was maybe if we can sing it to them, they won't shoot us. Well, there's yeah. some very passionate, moving lyrics in it. So, wow, well, I'm glad that you wrote it. That takes, you know, a lot of brave. You know, brought a lot of bravery. I would love to share it with our listening audience. Is that okay? Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we're going to take a pause and listen to the song. Hands up, everybody. Selling cigarettes and CDs 
Wasn't hurting anyone The police come start harassing me Threw me down to the ground Though I could hardly make a sound I began to beg and plead Officers get up because I can't breathe Knees all in my back Wouldn't cut me no slack The whole world watched me die And the court said it was justified Hands up, don't shoot Cause I got too much to lose On my back, can't shake them loose Life or death, why can't we choose? Not resisting Officers, but we're just scared Right or wrong, you take it there Just want my life and it's not fair That a routine traffic stop Turns into a whole new thing Ordered out of the car for no reason And you start to beat me Hit my body and my head Found later in a jail cell dead Claimed it was suicide Even though we proved they lied Justice was denied Cause the courts deemed it was justified Justice was denied Cause the courts deemed it was justified Hands up For all of our people who've been wrongly accused Hands up For our single mothers you did all you can do Hands up For our active fathers because it takes a man Hands up For our in debt students because you have a plan Hands up For all of our soldiers and all our better pay Hands up For all of our children to make it home again to today's episode of the Indie Music Show with your hosts, Stephanie Janot and Johnny J. And we have today's special guest, Brittany Camille. So Brittany, Hi. I was listening yeah. to some of your songs, including the one that we just heard, Hands Up. So what gives you, like, who inspires you, like, as a writer, as a songwriter? I mean, I love a lot of the old school, like 90s and RB. Of course, Whitney Houston was how I even discovered I could sing. That Bodyguard album was everything. So oh, <laughs> I <definitely>. actually <laughs> we- didn't even know I could sing before that. So I would definitely have to say Whitney Houston is probably my number one, you know. The um, record was discussed so many times on this show. Um, really? <laughs> right, well, even the time, you know, that one, do you remember by, by chance a track on that record called Queen of the Night? Yes. Movie, of course, but yes, that I was, do. <laughs> okay, okay, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There were some, <laughs> some people like, what, which one is that? Because, you know, they do, of course, you know, I will always love, you know, the arrangement they did of the Dolly Parton song. Of course, that's the one that, that sticks out. And then I forgot what the, the main B side one was, but that, to me, that kind of would, would have been like Janet Jackson's Black Cat of the body uh, the Bodyguard soundtrack. So I have yes. it, it's just so driven, you know, it's, uh, it's just so full and it's just like right on point. I've always been a fan of that song. Yeah, that came out like, what, 92? Oh my God. I, was it yeah. that long already? 92. Yeah, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back it on, hey, we had good movies, but good music to go yeah. with the movies. That's what we like. <laughs> yes, that's 
definitely, definitely what it's turning into these days. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of movies don't even have the soundtracks. And if they say, like, oh, a soundtrack available on, you know, whatever, like, get live records, you, you go, okay, where do I find it? I can't. It's just watered down stream, you know, because we we talked several times on this show about the physicality of the medium, of whether it be a, you know a you know a vinyl record or a CD and and, and, and cassette tapes and stuff. And now you see, like uh, Stephanie had mentioned, out there in New York, there's a museum with or was that in Washington stuff where Washington DC. Okay, yeah. So was that the Smithsonian Museum, right? Uh huh. And, and okay, so she actually saw the old, you know, like like a boombox in a display case at a museum. Wow. Like, well, that make me feel old. <laughs> well, I was like, that, that was my freaking stereo in high school and stuff. <laughs> I mean, and, it, and at the same time, it was considered a mobile device to take to the playground or whatever you were doing <laughs> for audio <laughs> entertainment. It you know. definitely was. Now you just carry around a Bluetooth speaker, you know. <laughs> just out of, out of your phone and stuff. And, you know, it's... In music, to me, in, in the 90s, I think music was such a primary thing amongst, how to say, our generation, because like, not just the music itself, but then secondarily, like the style, style of clothing, and also, and because the music or whatever band or musician you were following, that was the core, and then everything began, like, oh, like, okay, say, like, Whitney Houston, I want to be just like Whitney, or, or this or that, and I, even before that, I remember in the earlier days of MTV in the 1980s, I remember one of the first music videos I saw was How Will I Know, you know, when she's walking through that fun house and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it conditioned a lot of stuff about that, that particular song, her record. I, I, am, I think I, I may have had, uh, you know, a blank cassette and, you know, I recorded from the radio and stuff. And, uh, and I... Um, and I remember I was in second grade, I think, when that was a hit. And, um, yeah, I, uh, and now, but, but now, um, like, old retro shirts, like, that, like, I, like last year at Kohl's, I got, a, like, a brand new, fresh Whitney Houston t-shirt. And I'm like, what? Out of all places yes. you think that you could find these things would be at a Kohl's, like, store. I got is. one at Target. It's awesome. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> is it the white one, you know? No, it's her old album. It's actually the old album, but it's just her picture on it with the signature, the Whitney album, with the purple signature okay, and the black I, and white picture. Okay, well, I think we might have the same, like, like image, <laughs> but I, it's okay. not a different, like, color of it. That's awesome. Yeah, right. yeah, I got one of those too. Yeah, so definitely, I mean, Whitney Houston, you know, is definitely one of the main ones. But, uh, you know, I'm more of an 80s, 90s baby too. So I, 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 I liked Faith Evans growing up as well. And, oh, yeah. um, like Monica and, you know, just a lot of 90s. Like the, the, we were talking about this earlier, John, and it's just that 90s R&B and, and, right, and, right. Uh, that hip hop is just, type yes, it is everything. It is life. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Really, I think I think Babyface and L.A. Reid were powerful. Yes, I, and Blackstreet, and yes, yes. <laughs> the trouble is, like in, in the late '80s, you know, and then you know, I had I had some really young aunts on my dad's side, and they were, you know, um, so they were, you know, really into not too far of a reach of the same music I was getting into. You know, they say like uh, you kind of follow your parents' music. Uh, throughout grade school, and then when you get into you know junior high or late grade school, you know you, you start to kind of branch off and listen to more music and stuff. And so my uh, aunt was listening to Pebbles, and oh my okay. God. Yes, Pebbles, <laughs> Pebbles and Anita Baker, yeah, the music, yes. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I want to say "Girlfriend" was the first song by her, and, and then later on, "Mercedes Boy" and you know the other known hits and stuff. But "Girlfriend," like I remember yeah. seeing that video, and that, and uh, and then you know Prince wrote a song for her too, um, and then which you know you, you kind of had that Minneapolis sound, Paisley Park vibe to it, which you can, you can't say like you know um, you know either L.A. Reid or Babyface didn't. They, like, they, like, and it touch anybody back in the late 80s or early 90s for, for that particular time. Yes. Um, and then the T 
TLC, like Pretty Sexy, Cool Record, that one, I, uh, I, I still yes. play that consistently out to the person. Yes, that is an, a good yeah, record. That was a that good is, album. That's classic, yes. And then, of course, around that time, you know, Salt and Pepper came out, and I was so excited when I was in school. Sociology was my major, and I went to Illinois State University, and I was so excited. Um, of course, I'm one of the oldest ones in my class because I went to school part-time and, and worked full-time since the time I graduated high school. Um, oh, wow. But this was literally, I graduated in 2010 from college, and they have Salt and Pepper in our history books now, and I was just <laughs> so excited about that. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, that's great. Wow. Wow, so and Pepper. They went down as, as the first female rapper, so they're actually in history books. So I was super excited about that. Probably the only one in my class. So I was Don't forget Cinderella. <laughs> yes, Cinderella was in there too. Yeah, she was. <laughs> and, and up, well, in my, music, in my music business history class up in McNally's with College of Music in, in St. Paul, like, you know, there's... Um, there was a timeline of different genres and, and on my hip hop thing. I had that it was like, you know, the first female hip hop grew up on like I think they originated out of South Carolina and that makes sense if so because every Easter we would meet up with my cousins in um in uh like West Palm Beach, Florida. And they're like, Hey John, uh, have you ever heard heard like uh, of salt and pepper? And I'm like, No, I haven't but it was like a big thing, but then uh, I, I think they were from somewhere around Charleston, if I'm not mistaken, originally. And and then I, re I remember seeing the Push It video for the first time. And, <laughs> and, and then there was a Morris Day in the Time Corps. They're like, now this is a friend, buddy. This is a TV, yeah. you know. Yes. And, yes. And that was, uh, and then that evolved, you know, um, In Vogue. That's another, you know. Yes. I love In Vogue. That was my group. Me too. Me too. And Vogue was. They were, they were, you know, they kind of revolutionized where music was going at that time. You know, it wasn't, uh, sometimes people kind of try to sing things nicely back then. And in Vogue started with the, you know, not, not nice, but you know, the direct. Well, <laughs> definitely direct forward and blunt, like Free Your Mind yes. was, a, was, was a favorite of mine, which they kind of took the taste off uh, Parliament, George Clinton, Funkadelics, like, you know, Free Your, man, your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow, you know, well, they mm -hmm. kind of. That was well. That was the main message, you know. Yes. I mean, yes. Um, and I and I was, and I gotta say this. I I was really happy. I'm glad, kind of, also growing up in the '90s, um, especially the community I grew up in. You know, it it's like everybody. If you put somebody of a different color in for like at age two or something in a sandbox, um, you know, there's it was a very diverse community, but more of a smaller community, but so, but everybody knew everybody since preschooler kindergarten, so everyone kind of got along with everybody, so it was yeah. kind of like a, a unification from the start, you know, yeah. and and that's how it was, and then the irony of later on growing up, moving to bigger cities, of how more segregated it was as opposed to the unification of it, and that's, and that's kind of what the main message of that particular in, uh, in Vogue song that I got out of. Yeah. And, so for school yeah. talent shows and stuff, you know, you're like, hey, let's do an arrangement of for your mind, you know, like with, uh, you know, with, with this this girl group that we were friends with, you know, and, and, right? You know, we did like this three song medley and incorporate, and that was nice. It was a real peace of mind back then. But gosh, yeah, you know, like, yeah, for like the future, it's just like how many steps backwards can people get? It just doesn't make sense to me. Or others, yeah. probably. Yeah, well, funny story. Actually, my mom used to work with Prince um, really? and Sheila E. back in the day. Yeah, wow. when she was young, young whippersnapper. Um, I guess she oh. used to <laughs> kind of travel with them and do their laundry and stuff. And Sheila E. is actually our cousin on my mom's side. So, Get um, out of here. What? Yeah, yeah, she yeah, is. She's she our cousin. I say I'm, I follow her on Facebook. And, I mean, of course, I haven't talked to her in quite, like, I think, maybe it was a cousin's wedding when I was a kid was like the one and only time I ever saw her but um, yeah she's just I mean for her age she is gorgeous and amazing and she just has, still has so much you know spunk in her it's just it's just wonderful to see oh like, she's, and so. she's so energetic like the uh, I want to say it was a lemon cake this book and uh, record that she had just come out with um, okay. she, she's an amazing percussionist that goes without saying yes, she is. Uh, yes. I uh, oh, oh my gosh! You know what? I'm sorry, but you Evans girls, there is nothing that ceases to remind me. Like <laughs> true story, just to keep it I don't get get on a big chatterbox squirrel, you know, tangent here. 
like I, I know you guys have some royal blood in your family and just some <laughs> other stuff and now you're related to Sheila E yes like, actually it's on my mom's side not the Evan side though it's actually on my mom's side <laughs> but so <still>, not <laughs> yes so yep she did and she used to date the drummer from Earth Wind and Fire too so you know oh. I guess the, the perks of growing up in LA <laughs> <laughs> wow about your song me too oh so okay so me too um was the second song i ever wrote um and recorded so i recorded that in 2006 um and there was i lived in bloomington illinois at the time and there's a town called champaign illinois that was about uh, champaign urbana it was about 45 minutes away from where we lived and they had um a, a competition where you could sit, submit your music as a local artist and they would air it every Monday and you would compete against another local artist. So I um, had just recorded Me Too um, and about two months later, like I, I submitted it and stuff like that. About two months later, I went back to the studio to record my next song. And of course, you know, when you record your first song, well, actually it was technically my second, but my first one was my first time ever in the studio. So, you know, it wasn't really as put together as I would have liked for it to be but me too was and so I remember leaving the studio and the studio I was at happened to be out in the middle of nowhere like out in the in the boondocks cornfields soy fields Bloomington <laughs> Illinois okay. and when I was leaving the studio um there I I got in my car and I pressed eject because my song I heard my song my song was on and of course I was listening to my own CD over and over again so I pressed eject to take it out of the CD player and it kept playing so I was pressing it again and then the the, the DJ's voice came out and said that was Brittany Camille with me too winning the number one spot for the third week in a row and I'm like oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally didn't even know that A they picked my song and B it was the third week apparently in a row that it, it beat out another song so it, um, won, it ended up winning five weeks in a row which is their limit so after you win five weeks in a row um they supposedly put you into rotation even though i never really heard it in rotation um but, <laughs> so that, that was the stories behind me too i wrote it a friend of mine his name is sci-fi and he is an amazing an amazing our uh producer like he makes beats unlike anybody i've ever heard and i sometimes wish he would get out of bloomington um and get into some bigger cities because he is phenomenal and he does um he plays the guitar he plays the piano like he is just an overall amazing musician and he gave me that beat um so i wrote the song you know based on me and him both i mean he's always kind of done music but you know we were just getting into the whole recording studio type of thing and stuff and so yeah. he laid that song down with me and it was being played on the radio without me even knowing it so it was awesome <laughs> all right i would love to play it for the audience so we're gonna take a pause and play the song me too and we'll be right back
got your man, got your I man. got a couple dips, couple I keep dips. a couple chicks, couple so chicks. who you stunning on, stunning we on. even make the call, make we me both call. running home, running look home. I'm just saying, it ain't no need to play me shite, you on me cause you know I'm fresher than the baby wife, we used to be crazy tight, now I barely get a visit, I'm with my other piece, call me when you wanna kick it, now listen, you think that you can just run the streets? have been listening to the Indie Music Show, which airs each and every Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, on the English Connection Media, with your hosts, Stephanie Janot and... Johnny J. And today we have special guest Brittany Camille, who has been talking about her inspiring story and her music and all that good stuff. So, um... Brittany, like um, you you write a lot of great songs. So, what's your process like when you get into the studio? Like, how do you know? Of course, it's important what you have to learn when you first start going in the studio to be ready when you go because time is money. You know, so uh, you definitely have to already kind of know what direction you're going in. Um, you know, when when you get in the studio and get ready to lay things down. Um, at least that's been my experience. You know, um, so you know, just just practice. Practice, practice, you know, know exactly how you want things sung and, and, and you know, the kind of ad libs you might want to add in there and, and that kind of thing. But um, I just I've had such an opportunity to work with great people. And it's not even necessarily famous people, but just awesome musicians and, and people that just love music as, as much as I do. So that has been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity um, for me. And, you know, I've had, um, I have about, I only have about seven or eight songs total. Like, honestly, I, I work on my music when I can, but it wasn't coming first. Like, I kind of always went where the money was, um, which wasn't always in music when I was living in Bloomington, Illinois. Now, maybe I want, might want to reevaluate that now that I'm in California. <laughs> but, you know, the small town I was in before, it's just, you know, you could only go so far with it. And ultimately, I wanted to be a writer. I didn't even necessarily want to sing. I, I wanted to write. Um, so I've written quite a few songs for other people. And I've actually, um, the same show that Me Too was on in 2006, I had another song called Oh Yeah in 2011 that won number one five weeks in a row on that same Battle of the Beats. Wow, okay, so, that's yeah, great. So it was, and it was awesome. And then I had um, another song called On Your Way that was played down in Atlanta for a period of time back in like 2010. So it's just awesome because I don't have very many songs, but most of the ones I've had have been played on some radio stations of, of some sort. So that has been very rewarding. It makes me feel like people, you know, appreciate and like my music as much as I do. So <laughs> I just try and... Well, that's because you, you, you're bold everything. enough to share it and to push it, you know, like enter into contests and stuff like that. So that's a good thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and I've, I've opened up for a few people. Um, I, I used to do shows and culture fests. I used to do, um, you know, live bands. I used to sing with them and stuff like that. And in 2018, I was lucky enough to, um, I got to compete to open up for Snoop Dogg when he wow. performed in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, and then originally I didn't win, but they actually called me back and was like, you know, you, you, they judged it by the audience. So whoever basically had the most people there in the audience is who ended up winning because it was by cheers, you know. So somebody else won other than me, but then they actually called me back and asked me to come back. So it was, it was, it was pretty awesome, you know, and then I got to do that and I got to go to this new concert and, and, and it was just an amazing experience. So I just, I really appreciate it. And I'll never forget the first time I ever wrote a song. I've been writing songs since I was like eight or nine, 10. I was on the school bus in junior high singing one of my songs for the people on the bus. And they were literally like, we We've heard that song on the radio. You're lying. You didn't write that. And I'm like, no, you didn't hear the radio. was lying, you know. And, and they didn't believe me. Like, they were telling me that I was lying and that they heard that song on the radio and, you know, that type of thing. So I, 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 I like that 
the music can can speak to people and, and it makes you feel like you've heard something on the radio if it's a good song, even if you haven't. <laughs> and then I remember, I remember, like, um, you know, when I first met you, um, you know, there in central Illinois, uh, you, I mean, the CD that you gave me, I mean, yeah, each single song's on you there. I mean, it's a, it's very diverse. I mean, it's very different, either lyrically content or just the overall vibe of it and stuff. And then, um, uh, yeah, totally. And it was nice, like, you know, I would, even though I was touring all over the place, I just happened just to be centrally located at the time in Rye Island just because, you know, to be close to family and stuff. And so I invite Brittany over um, to my home studio at the time in Rock Island, and I had just been there. Poor Brittany, I, downstairs, the central, air, the central air conditioning is working great and stuff, but upstairs, I had to put this extra air conditioning unit because of the cedar wood it was like a huge conductor for the heat and so <laughs> these three particular I'm sure you remember this these three particular <laughs> closets that you're in it's like okay that was great Brittany go on out and she's like oh, so like she just dived into a swimming pool and sweat I just felt so bad for you but it was so great but you but you sounded amazing you know and uh oh, thank you and, and then yeah so any, any and, and then you know like working with with other, other musicians and collaborating with, with whomever uh, that definitely could say, oh, wow, well, I haven't, like, uh, if it's a bass player, like, okay, I haven't done this technique before. If it's a keyboard player, like, okay, I really haven't, you know, this, this particular pattern or voice from before, even with your voice. I'm like, okay, I haven't really dabbled in this style before, too. So that's definitely a benefit of working with others. Um, and so it sounds like you, you know, just uh, between, you know, the Midwest and over now, to you know on the west coast there in sacramento that wh whomever you may collaborate with i mean that will create some subconscious or unconscious creativity you know to add to your canvas there the yeah, definitely absolutely yes thank you very much yeah oh, I, I i appreciate it totally yeah so what you do you have a favorite uh do you have a favorite sub uh, subject content to write about like, you know not about? necessarily i've actually i like i said i wanted to write more than i wanted to sing so even some of the songs i've wrote i wrote for other people like they literally mm -hmm. just told me i want a song about this you know and they give me the beat and i write the song about that like i i am very good lyrically not to toot my own horn or anything hey, I, but I, I will testify <laughs> to that i, I you know i have your cds <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know but like, i might just be good with my words period uh, you know i talk and i got a mouth on me so you know that may work in part um but yeah it just i mean to me honestly a lot of times i write to what the song sounds like so like the song mm -hmm. oh yeah that i told you played on the radio in 2011 um i literally it was called oh yeah because the beat that somebody gave me was it had the kool-aid man on it so oh, no, do you I'm so i don't know if you've ever watched family guy so you know that scene in Family Guy where it's like, oh no, oh no, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. So that was the introduction to the song. So I literally wrote the song, oh yeah, because of the beat that had the introduction to the to the Family Guy on it. So I wrote that song based on the Kool Aid introduction that was already with the beat, you know. Yes, right. Oh my god. <laughs> So, you know, and it just depends. like I said, hands up. I just, I felt it in my heart to, to, to write it. So I did. And I actually had somebody, his, uh, his name is Lonnie Lawrence, um, wrote the beat for me for the song. Like I went into his studio and he, he created the beat based on the song. So wow. I didn't have the beat first. I had the song first. Right. And he made the beat go with the song for me. Like he specifically geared it for the song for me. Um, so, you know, and then me too, uh, he had already did that beat but to me it was catchy and I wanted to do something that was catchy so I go where the music takes me I guess is my writing process <laughs> oh organically is the best way to, to plant a seed I guess you know yeah. have you ever thought about uh, a particular instrument you want to dabble with to like I used to play the baritone <laughs> that, really that, that, no I did. I used to play the baritone for like two, three years. I played okay. the baritone only because my 
grandfather played the tuba and so I used to like play with it when I was at his house and stuff like that like trying to learn to play it so I actually played the baritone in honor of my grandfather you know at one point so uh, but other than that I've always wanted to play the guitar or the piano I really do wish those were two things that 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 I learned to do I would I would love like Alicia Keys I would love to be able to do that to just be able to play and sing and, and do my own music would be an awesome thing but not quite there <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there'll be, you know, yeah, five minutes, like, just make some time for it, I guess. And one good thing about having a synthesizer, like you said, like, starting with, like, a piano or something, like, like you know, you can dabble with different voicings to, like, oh, okay, yeah, like, I feel, maybe I should, you know, dabble with a bass guitar, too, or, like, just use a guitar basing, and, like, you know, it, it gives you an idea of a smorgasbord, if you will, of what instruments you like the best, and, like, okay, this is the yeah. best for songwriting. You know. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Nice. They they say the best instruments for writing, along of course with words, is like say, well, if you keep it simple, like with the bass, you're just playing the root note. So what you don't hear musically, you hear the rest musically. Um, or like if it's like on a, something as simple as like if you go outside, you know, just to get a change of space as opposed to your home studio or an actual studio rehearsal space or something. You know, you actually go outside or, or you, you go to your favorite park or downtown or whatever. You, it brings in more input to spit out output, uh, you know, and and then you come back and then you arrange it with, with all the instruments, you know, at your fingers have said you can and stuff. And that's what it's yeah. nice, like a little songwriting tool like that, you know. And these days, you know, with apps, you know, I try, I'm trying to keep, keep my old man listening to me, you know, for you, but, but with the, you know, keeping an analog, but with, with you know, <laughs> smartphones, you have these apps, you know, that you can use little mini devices and stuff on, you know, like if you have GarageBand or another little multi-track on your phone, you know, when you, and you can See, and I feel like that's one of my vices is I'm not good with technology stuff. So, like, a lot of my songs are not uploaded to the Internet and stuff like that. Like, I just, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not that old, but I, I don't dibble and dabble in the technology things too much. So, I feel like I'm behind in times. I used to have a MySpace music page, but that was a long time ago. So I do have a YouTube page, but it's not, like, all my music. So, um, like I said, that's my vice. I need to maybe upload some stuff, you know, to YouTube or the internet or, or you know, wherever people can actually listen and buy songs at. Maybe that's something I need to do. I don't know. <laughs> well, that book that I, I was telling you about earlier, it says, like, you know, because, like, it, I think this is one of the jokes that he put in there. And he goes, uh, uh, Facebook, the social media that your grandfather's on. And it says, Instagram, the social media that your best friends or your BFF or whatever is on. So, um, but I will have to give you, uh, Brittany, that, the title in that book too, um, it's, and I've talked to Stephanie about this book quite a bit. It's, it's a really cool book. And, uh, and then the guy, uh, has his podcast too. It's called I Ari's Take. And, you know, like I said, I picked it up here at a Chicago library and I had no idea it was one of the guys, I think he was a couple sem semesters behind I was, you know, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't share him in a, in a classroom or anything, but it definitely, he was like, you know, just a year or two behind me. Um, we had the same, you know, professors and all, so, um, yeah. So, um, before we end today's show, Brittany, do you have any, um, inspiration you could share with people who might want to have their song play for five weeks and winning a number one spot? <laughs> I mean, I guess I would say just go for it, you know, like, um, like you said, submitting your music and, 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 and trying to go for things is definitely the key. Like I went out for American Idol before I went out for the voice before, you know, just go for it. Like you'll never, you'll never have the opportunity if you don't try. So, you know, I definitely didn't expect any of my songs to be number one for five weeks in a row. And it happened to two or three of them. And, you know, it's just, you know, just, just absolutely go for it. Whatever your dream may be, whether it's, it's music or anything else, nothing gets done by doing nothing. Oh, well, with I concur. There, you know. <laughs> Hey, you're making fun of me. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's poking fun at my age. No, it's so I, funny. I um, I was I was watching um TV and State Farm commercial came on. So the guy's talking about um, I forgot. He said something about you do the most stuff that you do during retirement. And he said, "Yes, I concur." Uh -huh. And I was like, "Oh my god." <laughs> 
It reminded me so much oh, of you. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think I see that commercial. Oh, man. And I, you know what? I think also, subconsciously, when I saw them, I'm like, I really hope, you know, Stephanie does not happen to be watching TV a lot and does not see this particular commercial. Because I know she was going to break my balls afterwards if she did. And sure enough, here we are. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So before we go, can you tell us about your song, On Your Way? Thank you. Yes, um, On Your Way um, actually was a song I wrote for somebody else. So um, somebody asked me, she gave me the beat and was like, can you write a song? I want it to be about this specifically. And she told me what she wanted it to be about. Um, so um, I took what she said she wanted it to be about, and, and that's that's what I wrote. So um writing that song they love that song down in, in georgia in atlanta georgia like they played it a lot in the clubs and stuff down there and it's on the radio down there um and and that was their song you know different geographical areas i guess like different things but um yeah on your way was something i actually wrote for somebody else and then um ended up keeping it for myself with their permission of course um just because it never really got off the ground for them like they wanted it to be and and then the uh gentleman and you know sometimes it's hard when you write because if you write something and then somebody can't necessarily sing it the way you want it sung you kind of get a little like um you know this is cool <laughs> so uh you know the the person who actually made the beat for them and stuff was like well you know what you should just sing this song and i'm like well you know and i asked their permission and stuff and and i didn't release it for years after I wrote it years until, mm -hmm. you know, they didn't do anything with it for a year or two. And then after a year or two with, with them doing nothing with it, um, I asked them if it was okay if, if, you know, I held on to it, went ahead and released it. So that's what I did. If you are interested in reaching out to Brittany, how could they get in contact with you? Um, you can get in contact with me. I have Instagram, which is just Brittany Camille. It's B-R-I-T-T-A-N-I -T -T and then C-A-M-I-L-L-E. And, um, yeah, you can get in contact with me on Instagram or um, you can email me at bcevans2012 at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening and hope that you will join us next week for another episode of The Indie Music Show. What other people say and try to throw it in my face? What am I supposed to do about the past ways? To explain a damn thing about my past, I'm grown Just know that since there's you, it was you and you alone You think they know what we've been through It's good, I'm gone, you go to you In the end, you'll be